Meanwhile, the student-led protests against the Israel-Hamas war have mostly come to a halt, but without an agreement from New Jersey University officials to divest and boycott Israel as demonstrators demanded. At Rutgers Newark, the administration this week told organizers of a pro-Palestinian encampment it's time to leave. After three weeks of sleeping in tents to make their stance known, and as Rutgers President Jonathan Holloway is set to testify before Congress about reports of anti-Semitism on campus. But as Melissa Rose Cooper reports, student protesters say they're not going anywhere. What's hard, at least personally for me, and I, I want to make sure that I'm very clear about that, like this is a personal statement for me, is that, you know, genocide is being happened. And people are like, oh, you're ruining my graduation, you're ruining my picnic. Kids are dying. And one of the things I often talk about is like, what's your line in the sand? I'm always going to do whatever in my power to make sure that I'm fighting for social justice issues. Anthony Diaz of the Newark Solidarity Coalition and Newark Water Coalition reacting to a recent request from Rutgers Newark to clear this encampment in support of Palestine just days before students at its law school are set to graduate. I get it. You know, you work three years. This is the culmination of like the peak, you know, highlight of your life or career or professionalism. And then you, you come and you see this Palestinian encampment. But I think what we have to realize as Americans is that we don't live in a bubble. All of these interconnecting points, the intersectionality of the struggle, the land back for the Palestinians, the land back for the Newarkers, it's all tied up in one another. So people need to constantly be reinforced in that. Now on its 22nd day, participants of the encampment have been calling on the university to divest from Israel and reinvest resources into Newark's communities and their needs, like more affordable housing. I've always felt like personally connected to the Palestinian issue, especially as a Kashmiri person. Uh, and even as someone who lives in Newark at the moment, all of these struggles are interconnected. So it felt important to speak out, especially with what's been going on. It's a genocide ongoing across the ocean that is an extension of the genocides that have been committed here um, and all over the world by imperialist and colonial powers that have been doing this for hundreds of years now and it needs to stop. The cycles of violence need to stop. But despite two negotiation meetings with the school administration, students say their demands are still not being met. They are putting a lot of the research and the finding of the resources on us, um, which they're an institution in this city with billions of dollars and academics and people that it's their profession to research this kind of stuff and figure out how it works. But instead of them asking people to do that, they are telling us that we need to come with them with these fully formed plans on how exactly to do this. And that just doesn't seem like you're acting in good faith. If you have all of these resources and you're available to do this type of resource and you really want to work with us to accomplish these things that we're asking, then you would put people on it. A spokesperson from Rutgers Newark maintains they reached out to students in good faith at the start of their protest to address their concerns. The spokesperson also says they reached out to students again yesterday and are waiting for them to respond. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.